we're going to invite Miss Jill Jordan, Reverend Jill Jordan. She's an ordained minister, author, certified sound practitioner, Reiki practitioner, life coach, and spiritual teacher. Jill's a member of the Sound Sounds of the Light. Excuse me, sorry, the wrong line. <laughs> Sound Healers Association and an award-winning speaker. Her websites are soundofthelight.com, yourpowercompass.com, jillmmorgan.com, and a changereaction.com. So please help me and welcome Reverend Jill Morgan. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome everyone. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. This is working perfect. All right, so we'll do a group healing session. So you can just relax in your chair, your feet uncrossed, maybe your hands are resting on your lap. And let's just begin with the first sound that we made in our life, which is the breath. So let's take a deep breath in. Just let it out. Take another deep breath in. Let it out with a little sound. Joint 
white space, igniting in cells, tissue, ligaments. Bring it love. Allow that energy to keep following through down through the lower legs. And with it, pushing everything that doesn't serve you.
is a song to the universe. So what is your song? What is it sounding like? If you could name your song, what would it be? Would it be a Mozart? Would it be a song about bad luck and guilt? Would it be a sad song about all the sorrows that we experience? Or is it a love song? Is it a happy song? What is your life song? Well, like most people, it's probably a combination of Mozart and joy and regret and happiness and love, right? But did you know that you can be the conductor of this orchestra? You could be the conductor, the composer of this song. That your life song could be a love song. It could be meditation music. It could be filled with inspiration and faith and love. You are the one conducting it. The life that you're living every day can bring peace and happiness, even contentment, acceptance. It can bring excitement about what harmonious tone is coming next. Every day is a new chord to your song. You're adding to it. Have you ever listened to a song and you thought you knew the words, but then you found out maybe they were wrong or they were different than what you thought? Or, um, I, um, I had an experience, my daughter was younger, she was like maybe 11 or 12. She's singing a song, we're driving her somewhere. She's singing, this is the end, so blow all your heads off. And I was like, ah, ah, um, what, what is that? Why are you singing that? She's like, that's the words, mommy. I'm like, I don't think that's what they're saying. So I listen to the next chorus, and they're singing, this is the anthem. Throw all your hands up. perception on what we thought we knew and uh, she started saying that you know changed it and, and it felt better to me for sure <laughs> so there's things that we hear and there's things that we perceive in our life that may not be making us feel good but you know we have a perception about what it is and they, we may have a misperception and it's not just in songs right sometimes communication business relationships personal relationships um, even events, we have a perception about how it happened and what it's doing to us. We all have some old recordings that are playing over and over in our head from our childhood. You know, it could be, oh, you're so lazy, or why are you so shy, or you're not like your sister, or couldn't you be more like your brother, or whatever. These things, these loops in our head. And then we have these uh, self-create, self-composed uh, records that we play in our heads, these kind of events, guilt maybe, or regret. Uh, we play these loops of I'm not good enough, or this happened before so it's going to happen again. That's part of your song. So if we begin to be aware of the effects of sound, and we, we can learn how to be healthy, happy, peaceful, or at least in a state of contentment or neutrality to move into those states, we are affected by sound. We are sound. Everything that's happening around us is sound. Like we, we know science is telling us. I, I look into sound research. Our body, our bones, our cells, they're calling it a song. Each cell has a song. And it's singing to its environment. So a blood cell has a frequency that the blood have, doesn't have. And it's interacting with this. So we're learning so much about sound. They're doing sound mapping of your cells, so they can they can pinpoint the vibration of the cell. If it's a healthy cell, if it's a heart cell, if it's a liver cell, if it's a skin cell, if it's a healthy cell of those, or if it's an injured cell, if it's a diseased cell. And we're learning that changing the frequency changes the frequencies of our cells, of our bodies. And when one organ is out of tune, the whole orchestra is out of tune, right? We get sick. The stomach ache is changing everything. Well, frequencies affect other frequencies. And it's much like uh, mixing ingredients in a meal when you're cooking, right? If you add something, you ever add too much of a spice and it changed the whole thing? Uh, what, I eat oatmeal a lot with cinnamon, and, and one time I grabbed the cumin. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> Did that change the frequency of the oatmeal? Yeah. Yes. 
So you change your frequency, you change your environment, you change your life, you change your song. So whether these uh, frequencies around us are harmonic or not, our bodies, our minds are absorbing it. Our, we're having to process this, right? And it's our bodies want to stay in a balance, in a constant state of balance, but if we're bombarding it with frequencies that are making it difficult, we begin to get stressed or tired. We, we're, we're constantly trying to balance this the frequency state that's happening all around us. And um, it can, it, if we don't, yeah, we get stressed, which can cause disease, mental and um, psychological disharmony. Um, and that which will affect your life, right, and those around you. So have you ever like snapped at somebody when you, because you were stressed out of something else, and nothing to do with that person, but you snapped at them, or something you said came out wrong? It's happened to all of us, right? It could be that you're just stressed, you're tired, you've had an overload of frequency that's not matching up with you, or you're just living in an unconscious, low word amount of frequency. And sounds also create emotion. What kind of emotions arise if we think about, just think about, a gunshot? Or someone crying, someone that you love. Or nails on a chalkboard. What about the soft waves of an ocean? Or a light breeze in the trees. It's a different sound. Or a child's laughter. Different feeling, right? So how do we take over and be the maestro conductor of our orchestra and begin to broadcast at a higher frequency? By tuning our instruments, by directing the, com the composer and the performance of our life, which is us, our words, our thoughts, our actions. And it's a simple process that I call ABC. It's as simple as ABC. So you become aware. You start to notice. Oh. This made me angry, or this made me sad. Just awareness. And then breathe. Become present. Taking a breath brings you into this moment. And right here, right now, I'm okay. I may feel some anger coming up or whatever, but I'm here. I'm right now. I'm with this. And then you have a choice, a conscious choice. And a lot of times you have to process that negative emotion. It's there. If we resist it, it can start to poison us. So we notice it. We accept it. I mean, we do something to move through it. It could be just breathing. It could be singing. It could be shouting at, without causing harm to anyone else. <laughs> uh, it could be punching a pillow. If there's energy that's coming up and it needs to come out, let it. And then make a conscious choice. How? How can I feel better about this? What is a new perception? So I say it's as simple as ABC, right? It's simple, but it's not always easy. It's a process. But like most people in here, I've experienced stress, pain, guilt. So I know this works because I've processed a lot of big things and a lot of little things. Um, it started after a, a traumatic accident of someone that I loved. I was, I was letting my inner voice of guilt and regret be the chorus of my life. I, I had decided, I had to decide to create a new melody. Because what happened was, I lost someone to a drunk driver. He was running an errand for me. And he was hit. And he spent six days in a coma until his family and I decided to turn him off life support. And this event caused me to choose to live in darkness. I couldn't see, hear, or feel joy in any life, in any moment, for a very long time. Part of me didn't even want to. How can I live? How can I live in joy? When this man who showed me the most unconditional love is dead, because I sent him out of here. So I began this process of guilt. And it didn't feel good. I didn't like it, but I didn't know any other way. I began to feel like I knew there had to be another way. Other people have processed grief. Other people have gone through so much anger. You know, how does this happen? Did it happen like ABC that quick? 
No, but it started as a process. It started because I began to think, you know, the amount of love that I shared in that relationship and what I was given and seen in that relationship, even though it was short, it showed me love. It, it, and if I just spent my life being angry and filled guilt and grief, how was I honoring that love that I received? And so I began to just change little things, little things that I can handle day by day. And over time, um, a new record began to play. I had to listen to that part of my soul that is here to live, that is here to sing, that is filled with the love that expanded by knowing that person and tap into that. Well, I am safe. I'm okay. I'm here. I'm breathing. I can feel that love. I can drop down into my heart and stop listening to that broken record and feel that love. And think about what I had to be grateful for. And think about forgiveness. You'd think that me and Phil planned this talk, but we didn't. <laughs> forgiveness. Forgiving myself. Forgiveness is a gift that you give yourself. So it's a process of choosing to change your frequency, allowing and accepting. I never thought that I could change the way that I was feeling about life until I did. It is a choice. I, once I changed my perception, I came through stress in other new ways, different types of stress that came in, you know, divorce and loss of jobs and you know, all kinds of things that we all experience. We have a perception. How are we going to sing our life song? Have you ever wondered why there's certain things that you just can't change in your life? You just think, oh, this is just me. This is what I, this is who I am. And you just live with that. It may not make feel great, but I'm always late. It's just who I am. I always lose my keys. Or if this happened to me, this is a horrible marriage, so I can't be happy. Whatever it is, you can change it. You can change it by just becoming aware becoming present and choosing a better feeling of thought. Can you always jump from the bottom of the staircase to the top from uh, grief and guilt to super happiness? No, not usually. But you can begin to be present with those feelings, to accept them, to love yourself for having those feelings, and begin to look for the love. Begin to sing a new life song, a new chorus. And think about the words, you know? And when I say a new chorus, think about the words that you use, that we all use. And, you know, I'm from New York. I grew up in a place where there was a lot of foul language. <laughs> and um, it was just part of life. And people just talk about their problems. And this is the biggest, you know, everyone gathers and talks about the worst thing that's happened to them. And so it was a big shift for me. And it was a process, but it's working. It's happening. Words are the messengers of your life, and your body is processing them. Everything that's happening to you is coming in and through you. So if you're always saying that I'm late, I'm late, it's going to happen. But how about, you know, I can arrive a few minutes early. It's just simple little shifts by using new high vibrational words. The frequency of a beautiful shining light is in you. It is, or you wouldn't be here. So choose, be, be like the word police in your head. Because we're telling ourselves things that make us feel bad. And nobody can stop that except for us. Uh, remember Charlie Brown and the Peanuts gang, right? And you know that character that's called Pigpen? Okay, he's got the dirt all over fine, right? That's how I envision like a field, that's a frequency when we're in guilt and pain and sorrow and anger. It's like this. It, it's a, it's a muddy frequency that we're carrying around with us, and we can clean that up. We can be more like Snoopy. And Snoopy's happy and excited and lets things go and just like wants to dance. That could be your vibration, just by little choices. So stop using phrases like, I want it bad. How about you want it good? Or this just kills me. People say that all the time. I've had people say, I'm dying to see you. And I'm like, please, 
don't die. And they were like, ah, you know, I know I didn't mean that. Well, no, so say what you mean. I'm excited to get together with you, or whatever. You know, um, instead of don't forget your keys, how about remember your keys? Because that's really what you want, is the remembering part, or my foot is killing me. How about my foot is healing? Um, I hate when she says that, I'd say, right? Well, how about I prefer she talk nicer? A preference is not a judgment. It's just stating what you prefer. I just notice, oh, that thought's coming up. That's coming out of my mouth. What, 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 what could be my new preference? And the same works with the body. Instead of, I have diabetes, I have back pain, or whatever your doctor told you, which maybe is going through your body, I'm not saying to be in denial, but how about shifting it and not becoming identified with it? Let, let that not be your identity. Like, I'm having the experience of that thing. Or I'm healing a process called diabetes. If you're not attaching to it, it's just a process that's happening, you're moving through it. Or you can even be, I take excellent care of myself in all ways. And sometimes your little mind, or your little record player is going to go, you liar. No. When you learn a new chorus to a song, you don't just know it the first time. You, you have to practice it, right? You have to learn the new words. So will stress come up? Yes. This is the world of 2017 of planet Earth. There is a stressful life out there. But it doesn't mean that you have to let it affect your song. It doesn't have to take over your life, bring you down, make you sick. Change your perception. We work with other people, we live with other people that have negative words, and we don't have to participate. We don't. We can bless them, even silently. There's a lot that we can do to change our frequency. Other ways we can change our frequency, be outside. Be in nature. Trees, the earth, super high vibrational frequencies. And it affects us. We're feeling it. Turn off the TV, <laughs> turn off the news, don't listen to watch scary movies or um, war stories or violence. The brain, the mind doesn't know the difference when we're scared. If, there's a, if you hear a sound in the night, you're like, mm, what is that? And you're scared and you're like, oh, it's just a cat. So, but your mind doesn't know the difference for that moment. So when you're watching these things, it's affecting you. Begin to choose the better feeling thought, the better feeling frequency. Also, your breath. Talked about that a little bit. But your breath, think about it, it has sound. It's audible. Your breath sends oxygen, fills the body, brings you presence. There's tons of breathing exercises that you can do to help change your frequency. And then there's the sound of silence. Can we let ourselves have that? I have to have it. <laughs> I, my, my hearing is just too, I have to listen to it. What I do, it's peaceful. It's relaxing. But I have to choose it. To become aware and choose it. Sound healing is another way to change your frequency. I've had people come to meditations that don't even know anything about this. Their friend drunk, drunk in and they come up to me at the end and say they have this pain in their shoulders, been hurting all their life, and it moves down and out. There are things that can change your frequency. It doesn't have to be the voice. It can be your own voice. Your voice is the tuning instrument for your body. Use your voice. Sing. Sing happy songs. Sing just sounds. Just letting sound out will tone the body. You, a lot of people, they have a stressful day. They come home. They relax on the couch. And what do they do? <sighs> it's the body toning. It's letting go, right? It's relaxing. And if you use some sound, just the vowels, say, it can really begin to bring your body into a, a harmonic frequency to increase that sound. Oh, this is good. Okay. So in uh, Power Versus Force, it's a book by David Hawkins, MD, PhD, and he created a calibration scale, a, a scale of consciousness. And the reason I want to tell you this is because changing your frequency will change your life but it will also change everyone else's and all around us. So at the bottom of the scale, this is a, 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 a calibration scale, it's different than hertz, but 
he says at the bottom of the scale, at 20, is shame. So when we're feeling shame, it is the worst thing that we could be doing to our body. And the next one up is guilt at 30. So it's not surprising when I was living in guilt, I didn't want to live. It's pretty low. As we move up the scale, we have apathy at 50, grief is 75. See how grief is even an improvement from guilt. Fear is 100. Desire is 125. Might, maybe my think it's a little bit higher, but it's that I need something feeling. It's not quite as high as you think because you're coming from this state of uh, incompleteness. Anger, 150. Pride, 175. Courage is 200. Neutrality is 250. Willingness. Am I willing to change? Yeah, I'm willing. That's a quick shift to three, uh, three ten. And then acceptance. 350. Reason. 400. Love. 500. Joy. 540. Peace. 600. Enlightenment. 700. The reason I wanted to share this with you is because he says one person calibrating at 500, which is love. So focusing on love, love in your heart, love for another, focusing on love. One person calibrating at 500 positively affects about 750,000 people. One person calibrating at 600, which is peace, positively affects about 10 million people. I mean, that helps us to understand that, you know what, not every single being has to be focused on peace, but if we are, we're helping, we're shifting, we're, we're beginning to tip the scales on our planet towards peace. Not many reach this, but some do in moments, and one person's calibrating at 700 positively affects about 70 million people. So you have the power to heal yourself, to heal your body, to change your life, and those around you by making higher vibrational choices, higher vibrational words, a new chorus for your life. It doesn't cost anything. It's available to you in any moment, and you'll receive a change in your life. Like when the things that, when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at begin to change. And just remember, if there's something that you don't like, I mean, it's gonna come up, there's two things you can do, change it, or change the way you're looking at it. That's all you can do. And sometimes it's just looking at it. Because being present with something can sometimes just move you right through it. It feels uncomfortable, but if you just are present with it, you can move to the other side of it. So instead of focusing on what's wrong, we focus on what can we do to feel better? What, how can we solve it? I have transformed great pain and suffering, little things, big things, and everything in between by this little process of A, B, C, be aware. Be with your breath, just be. And then consciously choose new words and positive thoughts. Simple, but not always easy, because you're changing your habit, right? So be persistent. Love yourself and your world enough to stick to it. You gotta learn that new song, learn that new chorus. Look for new ways to use positive words and watch how much better you feel. Watch how quickly your life improves. Because the quality of your life is not based on all of these things that have happened to you or around you. The quality of your life is determined by what's happening within you. Which is awesome because that's powerful and accessible in any moment. It's in you. Live in de de deliberate creation. Conduct your life song with excitement, with frequencies and powerful words that raise your vibration. Create positive change in your world. You have the ultimate tool and the tip of your tongue. Sing the anthem, throw your hands up. <laughs> Choose what this song is in each moment. You have a choice. What is your life song.